Hi, I'm Paul Kasabian, I'm a structural engineer, and in some of my videos you've probably seen this thing in the background, um, this piece of metal. It's, um, it's actually an, an aluminium alloy. That's right, I live in Boston, but uh, this is from a project in the UK, so instead of aluminium, this is going to be aluminium for this video, so I don't hurt its feelings. And it is part of the deck of a pedestrian bridge. In fact, the first main design project I had back in the UK um, is for the Lock Meadow footbridge, which is in Lock Meadow, Kent, in the south of England. And this was a fantastic project for me. It has a bunch of different materials, structural systems, all working together in a very structurally and architecturally expressive project. Um, it's also one where I learned how to work with a very talented architecture team. I learned a lot about how things go together on a construction site. And given all these different things, I thought it was a great example to show you different parts of what I've uh, included in my previous videos are uh, in this video so that you can understand how they come together for a specific project. And most of all, I want this video to be a thank you to Ian Firth. Um, he was the principal in the office uh, of the design for this project. But more importantly for me, at least, he was uh, the main mentor in my career, uh, both for that project and as I was starting through college and in my first years during my 20s as a structural engineer. Um, so thank you, Ian, for this. And for the rest of you, um, I hope you learn quite a few different ideas and thinking about conceptualizing structures and getting details and materials into an overall structural and architectural form. So here's the design competition winning image. Um, back in the 90s, a lot of these images were set at nighttime, I think because it was just easier than rendering the background. Anyway, the bridge itself is, is here in this photograph. It is called a cable stayed bridge. That means the cables go directly from the tower down to the deck itself. And I've shown uh, an example of this back when we did the trusses. Oh. Uh -uh. That uh, when you have to cantilever a weight further away from your supports, you've got the tension that's up here in red counteracted by a compression that's there in blue. So that's what we're seeing over here. We've got the cables in tension, and that means this deck here is in compression. That's something that's specific to cable stayed bridges. If you want to extend that uh, cantilever further, you can actually see this working with an inclined compression member, much like we have right here with this inclined compressive tower. And then you can stabilize it by having a horizontal tension member along the top. So I use these images back in the truss video I showed you. And if you take this diagram and reflect it, you get the whole bridge. This is the area that I was showing you before. And this is reflected back to the other side, which is a land-based side, but it's extended over with a suspended span for a couple of reasons. First of all, it allows for bicycle and wheel-assisted accessibility. And also, this river sometimes floods and the stairs become inaccessible uh, anyway. And this is the deck itself. This is really, really interesting. This is a set of 20 of the aluminium extrusions I showed you. Here they are. Here it is. It was going in and out of, of the screen. Is it? So this is the length of the extrusion. And these are placed back to back. So that's what you're seeing there on the screen. There's a little shear key that gets placed here. But what you're also seeing here is a bunch of uh, stainless steel rods that are tensioned. And what they do is they clamp together this deck. Aluminium is a metal that weakens when you weld it. So instead of welding it here, and then it's already weaker than steel anyway, so you don't want to sort of chase yourself downwards in terms of sizing the uh, metal. So here we clamped it together, much like I showed um, in a pre-stressing video I did, where, for example, with a pack of cards, you can hold the pack of cards that would otherwise be loose by putting an, an elastic band around them, right? We do that all the time. And so what we've got here is an elastic band in tension, and that's compressing these otherwise loose cards together. It's exactly the same as what we're doing here. We're compressing these aluminum extrusions together, and they form the deck that you walk on. If we do a close-up of the sort of section through that deck, here are all of them back to back, all the way across. And uh, here are the stainless steel rods. They were sort of spaced regularly along the length of the deck. Uh, you may even actually see a note here about adding uh, cement grout. This was to add weight to the deck itself 
to reduce the uh, consequences of vibration from people walking across it. This was actually a couple of years before the London Millennium Bridge wobbling. And if we do a look at a single extrusion now, so here's the shape, 300 millimeters deep, that's 12 inches. Um, in as part of the extrusion were these sort of uh, ridges that allowed for the walking surface. So there's no walkway surface material added to this. You are walking on the aluminium itself. Uh, this is essentially a singular structural and architectural object. You walk on the, the extrusion, it's the, it's the visual finish, um, it's curved on the base to reflect light from the water below, and it's the structure itself. I spend a lot of time working on just this shape alone. Um, um, essentially, I, I like to think it is why I didn't have a girlfriend when I was 26 years old because of just working on this shape, um, although the reality is probably close to the fact that I look a bit like Woody Allen's uglier brother. Anyway, um, the uh, tower that I showed you before um, is, is in compression. It's a very interesting design. I covered some of this in the video on uh, columns, but here's the diagram that I use. Again, blue is in compression, and we've got three things going on here with this tower, with this column that's in compression. First, it is shaped wider in the middle where it is more likely to buckle, so the overall shape relates well to the overall prevention of buckling. Second, the area of the column is consisting in, is con in these solid rods that are placed away from the center. There's three in the actual uh, tower itself. And last of all, is a way of preventing each of those individual rods from buckling themselves. In the diagram here, it's sort of shown a few sort of ties connecting and crisscrossing. Over on this project, we had a couple of double plates that prov provided a rigid connection over at uh, each of these locations. There's um, a circular hole cut through each, not just because that material isn't required, but also because contained in this lower part is a light that shines up the center at nighttime, so it's very beautiful. And here, where it meets what the central support and the middle access via a set of stairs, this I found really fascinating um, for me at, at this stage of my career. These were the cantilevered stairs that I couldn't make work individually, and in working with the architect and thinking through how we might make these behave, um, we used the sort of principle that instead of having two nearby elements that can are uh, independent from each other, this is the diagram you can see for sort of a typical beam. Um, in this case, these are cantilevered stairs, but it's the same idea that can slip related to each other. Instead, why not have them in some way connected? So what you actually see is they look pretty cantilevered, but there's a small little connection behind that joins the two. And the analogy I think I've shown you before is much like when you have um, a set of paper that just flops under its own weight because all of the pieces of paper can slide uh, related to each other, as opposed to um, a piece of card that is essentially made out of exactly the same material, but none of the layers, as it were, can slide related to each other, um, and therefore it is far more rigid. Um, and I wanted to also show you the end detail. This is the cable that comes into the anchorage. The cable goes through, there's a, a sort of threaded air at the end, goes to a nut, a really big washer that bears on this cylinder. And a lot of design projects like this, you really have to think about the details as well. So here are a bunch of my sketches that were trying to solve the problem of how do you seal the top of the cable anchorage to prevent uh, water getting in just for long-term maintenance and durability. And you can see uh, here's a sort of classic uh, example that's often used on projects and my various not great sketches but it helps me think um, through to sort of the solution that we put on site. The bridge uh, was opened by Prince Michael of Kent, there he is. Um, I was there on the day, um, but I know, I know this image is fuzzy, um, it's an old image and anyway that, that's what the 90s looked like. Uh, the, um, it's interesting, when we do designs for pedestrian bridges, one of the load cases, obviously, is that the whole bridge would be full of people. And to be honest, you know, when you're doing the design, you have to do the load case, and you think, I wonder if this will ever actually happen on this bridge. And I was there on the day, and they're walking over from one side to the other quite slowly, and there's a whole group of people who were there for the big opening, 
walking slowly behind them. And I remember watching with just sort of dread that I was slowly watching the bridge take on essentially the ultimate load case of it being full of people all jammed next to each other walking across. Anyway, it worked. <laughs> it's what we do design and analysis for. Um, but it was a really great day, so it's open there. Um, it's a really, really lovely bridge. One of the things that it also taught me, other than working as a sort of combined structure and architectural design, is also to be confident about doing design and construction projects that are of their time. You know, this is located in a historic area, um, and it is associated and I think complementary with the more historic structures of their time behind it, here in the image, which, you know, were the design and construction of their time. You know, we move forward, we are, we are people who live and develop new ideas. And I think it is complementary, it is respectful, and yet it is also contemporary. Um, I'll finish up with this image. This is as what happens as you're going uh, along the river and underneath it. You can see it really is a very slender bridge, um, really sort of fits into the landscape uh, very well. And it provides a beautiful crossing for people while also being a, a, a durable, low maintenance uh, bridge. And I think uh, very expressive of a combined structural and architectural design approach. It taught me a lot. Um, I think these projects are amazing uh, as an experience to understand the value that a structural engineer can bring to design. And I hope you enjoyed it.